Hi, my name's Jeff. They call me the Blue Collar Scientist, and I'm down in southern Arizona. I'm working on some telescopes. Behind me is the dome for the 32-inch Ritchie at Junk Bond Observatory, and this is where I'll be spending the rest of the week putting in a new control system and doing some tests and even taking some pictures of some asteroids. Um, we're outside of Sierra Vista in a rural part of the state. We're at about 4,600 feet elevation. Uh, it's a bit windy, so I hope that the uh, wind on the mic noise isn't too bad. Anyway, it's perfectly clear out. The sun is harsh, brutal. It's almost noon, and uh, I just got to get inside. So I thought we'd take this opportunity to take a little tour of the observatory. Here we are in the control room. Uh, this is a little closet-sized space. If your house has a walk-in closet uh, in your bedroom, your walk-in closet's probably bigger than this room. Uh, we have three computers in here. Uh, two of them are pretty archaic. Uh, and we have a low-level controller, which is what's exhibited on this screen here. This is Dave Harvey's PCTCS, which is used uh, most of the observatories at Seward Observatory, most of the telescopes there. And, uh, and several others as well. I think the big Yerkes uh, refractor runs it and uh, all over the world. Um, this is our low-level system, and I don't really have anything to do with running this or writing this. Uh, that's all somebody else's uh, problem. The uh, issue that I usually work on is the high-level control system, which is on this computer. And we use, as a matter of convenience, a piece of software called ACP, which we'll see here in a second. And ACP is written by Bob Denny, and he does a great job of getting a, a, a wonderful tool set, programmer's tool set together uh, to allow people to do pretty much whatever they want with their telescopes. Uh, and at this observatory, what I do is I write a high-level script that runs in ACP and controls the night's observing and uh, does some image analysis in real time and a few other... Behind me, the, the wall of the uh, observatory over here has been painted black. We did that a couple years ago, and it's just uh, latex paint that we rolled up there. Um, and uh, everything else in here is pretty dark as well. It, it turns the whole facility into kind of a black hole and it makes it hard to see. So even in the daylight, uh, very frequently when we're working here, we'll be using flashlights and headlamps and stuff. So if the picture seems a little dark to you, that's why. Anyway, directly behind my head is the business end of the telescope. Uh, you can see a lot of cool stuff going on. This is a 32-inch telescope. That means that there's a mirror here that's 32 inches in diameter. Uh, that's 0.81 meters or 0.82 meters, something like that. Um, so it's a fairly large telescope to be uh, uh, in, in a, a private facility like this. Uh, we have two big handles to hold on to uh, that uh, we can use if we ever need to slew the telescope manually, but for the most part we don't do that. We, we do uh, computer control most of the time. All of our terminal end wiring uh, comes out here. It's all snaked down through the fork arms, uh, disappears into the floor and goes into the control room. It's all very well bundled and hidden and safe, uh, except for this little gadget here which had a little mishap a month or so ago, and that's one of the things I'm down here to fix. This big silver looking aluminum thing is a CCD camera. Um, it uh, is basically a, uh, a digital camera, very similar to what you would use to take digital pictures uh, snapshots with, with several important differences. First, it has a gigantic chip in it, uh, and most uh, digital cameras have chips that are not as large. And second, it has a cooler in it. It has a thermoelectric cooler, a Peltier Junction cooler, some people call it. And uh, we bring the temperature of the camera down to well below the, the freezing point uh, before we take any images of the night sky because we're taking long exposure photographs and doing that reduces the amount of noise by a significant amount. This telescope has two or three focusers depending on uh, how you're using it and what kind of instrumentation you have hooked up to the back end. You can see one of the focusers right here. That's just a, an astrophysics rack and pinion focuser. You turn this knob and it changes the focus. 
the secondary mirror up at the front end of the telescope is motorized and can move in and out. Uh, and that also serves as another focuser. And we can also install here a uh, computer controlled focuser to make focus adjustments during the middle of the night if we want to. The uh, software that I write actually has the capability of focusing the telescope uh, without user intervention. And uh, we don't do that too much with this telescope because it's very thermally stable. It just doesn't go out of focus over the course of a night. Uh, a couple of finder scopes on it. You can see the one on the bottom. There's another one on the top up here so that you can pretty much always get to one if you need it. Um, the, the sad fact is that occasionally a telescope will get all turned around and you can't figure out where it's pointing from the computer controls. So at such a time you want a little finder scope to be able to point it to a known star and get things centered up and synchronized again. Um, this camera and this uh, focal reducer come off and a, an eyepiece can be put in there. And in a couple nights, we're going to have uh, Tom Palakis, uh, contributing editor of Astronomy Magazine down here. And uh, we're going to be doing some observing with him uh, with our eyes. It's kind of a nice fringe benefit of doing this kind of work. Uh, but for the next couple nights, we're going to be testing out the brand new control system, which we installed last night. Uh, so all of these wires will be plugged into the camera. Everything. Okay, it looks like my laptop fell asleep in the middle of uh, talking about how the observing works. So I'm going to try this again. Uh, basically tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to set the telescope up to run at, uh, at about 5 o'clock in the evening. And then we're going to go out to eat. And the telescope is going to sit around and wait for the sun to set. And it's going to start its observing up at the appropriate time. And for the first 90 minutes of the night, it's going to look uh, rather low to the horizon in the west, and uh, it's going to be looking for comets, uh, low solar elongation comets, where they're uh, hopefully more likely to be discovered. It's kind of an experiment for us. Uh, it's not necessarily anything that we expect to be very productive, but the first, uh, the first part of the evening usually isn't productive for asteroids anyway. So we're going to do that. Uh, after that 90 minutes is up, the telescope is going to devote itself to taking pictures of asteroids, and it's going to look for some near-Earth objects that have not been confirmed yet. Uh, we're also going to look at some uh, well-known minor planets that need observation in order to, to refine their orbit a little bit and uh, so that we're making an improvement to our knowledge of those asteroids, even though they're already discovered. And I think we're also going to try to take a picture of Rebecca Watson tonight. Uh, Rebecca Watson uh, being the asteroid named after the actual Rebecca Watson of uh, Skeptic. So um, it'll do that for hours and hours uh, over the course of the night. And then the last 90 minutes of the evening, which again are not very productive times normally for the telescope, it's going to spend that time looking for comets uh, at low solar elongation in the east. Uh, so it'll do that, and when it gets done with that, the telescope will go into its park position, which is similar to what you see here. And it will take some dark frames, uh, calibration frames that allow us to calibrate the noise in the images. Uh, and then it'll shut down and go to sleep, turn everything off. And uh, during this whole time, we will either be eating dinner or sleeping. So when we get up tomorrow morning, uh, it should be... Uh, uh, all set, Every, you know, everything should be done, all the images should be ready for analysis, and we should be good to go. That's uh, what happens if it works right. The, since the control system is new, there might be a few bugs, there might be a few problems, so I'll probably be up a couple times in the night to check on it just to make sure. But this is pretty uh, typical, pretty routine way of operating this telescope. Okay, so there you have it. I think that pretty much does it for our tour for today. And I hope that this hasn't been too painful for you. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, maybe I'll do this again tomorrow and show you some of the pictures that we took and uh, show you how we analyze the data and, um, and uh, do the scientific side of the work here. Uh, so until then, I will talk to you later. Have a good day.